All right, let's pass these tests. Let's start with this first one here. It should not be admin. We don't have an admin attribute in our model because we haven't added an admin attribute to our database. Remember, our models always reflect what is ever in our database. So if we add a new attribute to our database, our model will immediately reflect that. So how do we add this attribute to the database? That's our migration. So let's go ahead and Rails generate a migration and that migration we'll call add admin to users and we're gonna tell it to be a boolean value here so now we can do that and it's gonna generate a file right there that um, two, four, oh, four, three. by default adds users uh, admin column to the, to the user's database. Now one thing we didn't do with the password digest that we should have done, and I kind of did it behind the scenes, and I apologize for that, is that we didn't consider what happens to all the, the data that's already in the database. So in this case, what should the admin attribute be for all our existing users? Should they all be considered admins, or should they not, or should be there some mix? Uh, in, in our case, I'm going to say uh, false. We, we shouldn't have a, an admin user um, by default. We want to do it I explicitly. And, and so by doing that, um, we make sure that we don't accidentally introduce new behavior into our system when we add a new functionality that was unintended. This is something that you really need to think carefully. Sometimes a default value will be sufficient. Sometimes you will actually have to, in the code right here, have some routine that says, oh, I'm going to have to compute this value or set it to, to some value that can't be a default be, it, because I don't want to have a corrupt database when I add this, this new value. But it has to be thought of uh, very carefully and can be quickly overlooked, as I demonstrated with the password default in, in our setup. So if we do that, now we can run our db migrate command. And that will go ahead and look in our db migrate folder for any new migrations. It sees this one, and so it adds that admin column to our database. Once we do that, we can uh, go ahead and look at in our console and, and see that this admin attribute has been set up properly. So if we do something like user.all, we can see uh, all our, it's kind of hard to see, so let's clear that and do user.first. We can look at our John Doe, they've got an admin attribute uh, of false, uh, and, and so did all, all the others. Uh, let's go ahead in here while we're at add it and create our admin user. So user create, our name is admin, our email is also admin uh, at example.com, our password is the ever secure password, and we also have a password confirmation to make sure that we entered it correctly. And here's the difference here, we want our admin to be true. And you can see now we've got that user admin with that capability. Uh, currently, and as we go forward, this is the only way we're going to have to be able to create an administrative user or inside the console to, to change the admin from to false to true. Uh, you can make an interface to do it, but um, you should be able to apply the principles that we're talking about to, to be able to make that happen. So now that we, we've got this admin user and this admin attribute, we can go ahead and run our tests. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we set up our test database to look like our development database, to have this admin attribute. Uh, otherwise, our, our spec is, is going to run. So now we can run our spec. And what's going to happen here is since we've got our admin attribute and we default it to false, our first test 
is now going to pass because our, our default user is, is going to work. However, the second one is not because we haven't told Factory Girl how to make an administrator. So let's go ahead and edit spec factories. And what we want to do is we want to create an administrative view that's exactly like a user plus. So what we can do is we can put a factory of admin inside our user factory. And what that does is says do everything that's in the user factory plus all of these additional commands. And we only have one additional thing. We want to set admin to true. Now if we didn't have the admin default being false, let's say we set admin to false explicitly in, in all of our uh, data, we would also m need to make sure that we had admin false here so that we didn't have some weird setting for uh, a user. And this would still work because this is more specific than this. So if we create a generic user, they're not an admin. If we can create an admin, they, they have that set. Since we have that default, we don't need that to be set and this will work. So let's go ahead and run Okay, running the test. Excuse me there. And we, we run the tests and what? Oh, uh, I had a problem here doing the right uh, incantation for Factory Girl. So let's go back and edit that test. Uh, what I sh should have done is told it to create that administrator. Uh, so now when we run this test, we should see everything pass because our first test pass, our second test should create administrator and that administrator attribute should be true so this should be true and, and everything is good and here we go we see green across the board and so we have a user that can be administrator now we're going to create um, tests that will be able to add some functionality for these administrative users.